Hi, this is Nikhil Hasija, Senior Product Manager for Dynamic CRM, and this week I'm talking to Rich Dickinson in our PM team who's working on enriching the CRM experience. So Rich, you've been with the CRM team since the 3 days, and uh, can you compare and contrast CRM 2011 with when you started and you know how the product has morphed, and in that process, tell us about yourself. Sure. I came from the Microsoft Access team. Uh, prior to this, I spent 12 years in there. I started support, moved into program management. So, uh, And when I came to the CRM team, we were really just getting ready to launch CRM 3.0. And with CRM 3.0, we sort of said, hey, this is the ability to take a CRM product and make it fit your business. So the keyword we used to say, it, it works the way your business does. And I think that when we moved to 4.0, we did a lot of work to make that richer and more relationships and make it in a, uh, from a design perspective a little bit better. But with 5.0 and CRM 2011, we've really taken it to the next step and said, hey, the user experiences, they need to be all about the customer, all about the context of the user. So if we talk about the, the uh, role-based forms as a concept where you can actually say, oh, this person is a customer support customer support person. So they really need to know what are the open cases that this customer has so they can say, oh, you're having a product problem with product A and it's the same problem that's going to happen in product B. And how can they quickly get that information and answer the customer's needs? At the same time, the salesperson needs to say, what are the open opportunities for that customer and how can they uh, interact and say, oh, this opportunity is closing in a couple days. Right. Uh, but there's a special that's happening tomorrow. Can we close it earlier so that we can get more revenue and the customer can get a better deal? So lots of UX enhancements. And I talked to Michael uh, a bit a few weeks back on this. I think with you we want to go a little bit deeper on how things surface within CRM. Great. So, so things that you talked about with Michael, the ribbon and Fluent UI and the, the whole navigation store, they all really come down to how can we tailor the user experience towards the customer's role or the customer's data that they're working with. If you think about uh, the ribbon, when we present the form for that customer service person, we're actually able to completely change out that ribbon and make it unique and useful for that customer service person. Mm -hmm. And so the, the ability in the application to morph to that needed user experience is really, really important. So let's talk about some use cases where this might come together. Sure. So. Uh, We'll actually do this in the demo. I've actually built out two sort of scenarios that I want to work with. One is when I'm a customer service person, I need to know what are the cases that are open with this customer and what are the cases that have been closed recently. So what I built is a form that, that in one shot, they can look at the form and see what are the open cases that aren't resolved yet and what are the recently resolved cases. So they can quickly, without the customer saying anything, know what the uh, what the context is that they're going into. Very cool. And all this is coming uh, in CRM 2011. We're going to see it for the first time. You bet. We're going to show you some, some great user experience, how to switch through the different user experiences. And even to take it a little further, I've done some work so that you can actually, t the, the form actually gets tailored based on the data it's working on. So I've taken an opportunity and I've morphed, I've uh, prototyped it as though there's a sales stage, I haven't built the whole process for sure. it, but I've, I've morphed it for this demo, where I actually changed the form based on what stage we're in in this sales process. So you can have an opportunity that's very, very concise to start with, but as more and more information gets pro uh, brought back, you'll get more and more data. Fantastic. I think at this point in time, we should go see that demo. You bet. So here I'm in front of CRM 2011, and I want to show you both how I built a role-based form that's designed around that customer service experience, and then I'm going to show you a little bit more about an opportunity that's designed to be data-driven. So let's go over to the sales area. I'm going to go over to accounts, and we're going to open up a form. So as this is loading, uh, the default user experience uh, is that you'll be on a single form. Uh, but what I just showed you is ability to switch between different forms if you have multiple forms for your role. So in this case, this is a default out-of-box uh, account form. We've done a little bit of work to make it uh, useful and for salespeople, but it's not very contextual to that customer service person. So what I've done is I've actually built a new form. 
that I call the service form. Now, this is a form that you'd only assign out to, that you'd associate with a service role, and this is what they would get by their default. You'll notice here that I have the header that talks about the primary contact, uh, what their uh, the customer rating is, but also here I have what are the open cases and what are my closed cases? What are the resolved cases? So that I actually can go figure out how is the state of this customer? Are they in real trouble because they have six open cases, all kinds of problems, or are they in really good shape and there's no open cases? Or is that first resolved case exactly a repeat of what the customer had? So can I go look in that case to find out what, what the problem was? So as you can see in a larger monitor, in one screen, this customer service rep can know what to do with this customer. Again, switching between those different forms is easy to do just with a form switcher that we built into the left hand part of the form. And Rich, I will only see these forms if my role is allowed to see these forms. Exactly. Right? So let's go ahead and uh, do the next step. So one of the things that we've done a, a great job of doing is allowing you to not have to navigate uh, randomly. You actually uh, purposely navigate. And one of the ways that we did that is we've added a customized tab. So if you're a customizer of the system and have the right privileges, we can go and design the form or we can go with a customize the entity. Uh, I want to go to customize the entity because I want to show you how you can assign roles to the different forms and make sure that only customer service sees the customer service form. So what I'm going to do, go to the forms grid. I'm going to select the service form and say assign security roles. Now in this editor, you'll see that I've taken and I've looked at the security roles and the CSR manager, the customer service representative manager, and the customer service representative role have been checked, but the salesperson has not. So if I log into the system as a salesperson, this form wouldn't be available for me. So I would really see the only the out of box form. Now, every entity must have a default form or a fallback form so that whenever a user has ability to see that entity, they can see it. So in this case, uh, the, the out-of-box form is the, the default form. So this is a form that anybody would ever see. You could also build multiple forms here. So if you think about it, maybe your salespeople need to have uh, a specific form that's tailored to small business. So you have a small business department that's doing cold calls, and they really need a very, very crisp form that just has the telephone number and the account name, uh, and they don't care about revenue and fiscal properties and the number of employees. This is a way that you could actually build a sales form that's designed specifically for that user. We've done work so that you can actually drag and drop fields in the form editor. Uh, you can actually go over to this left nav and get rid of things that you don't need. So in the world of this service, we really don't need invoices. So you can remove it and that just gets that form doesn't have that. It still exists as a re relationship for the rest of the forms, but this form has been tailored again for that customer service experience. Let's go ahead and close that and get out of it. So the next thing I want to show you is the world of building data-driven forms. So in, in CRM 2011, we've done a lot of work so to make it so that you can show and hide form elements based on the data that it's working with. We've done the client APA. So let me go ahead and show you what that means. So I'm going to opportunities and I'm going to open up the opportunity form. Now on this opportunity form, I built a special one and you notice that it says stage based up here in the left hand corner. This is a form that I've built so that show and hides data uh, sections based on this sales stage that I've mocked up. Now this is a demo, so it's not all this workflow behind it, but you could see an owl as part of a workflow design system. So when an opportunity starts, there's really not a lot of information you need. You just need to sort of say, okay, there's a customer interested. What are the key things that they're interested in at a high level? What's the needs assessment? As you go further down this, the, the opportunity stages, you need more information. So in this case, what's the estimate for this revenue. What's the probability for it? So here you see that I only have a, a tabs for general and that, uh, notes and activities. Once I move to product fit, where I'm actually going to select what are the products that this customer is interested in, you'll notice that line items and quotes and preferences show up now in the UI. And if you scroll down in the form, 
You'll notice that we actually have the products that can be added for the opportunity, the quotes that are necessary for that opportunity. Now, again, I talked about the fact that we're tailoring the UI to the context early in my presentation. Well, this part of that is by the contextual ribbon. So here I'm actually saying, oh, in a subgrid, I'm going to actually show you the quotes, and I can add quotes right inside of the form without having to navigate over to this orders area, have the whole thing paint, and then get the ribbon. I can actually just do that right from the quotes tab right here. These tailored experiences are going to make it so much easier for our users to use the system. Thank you, Rich. Come back here next week when we talk to another program manager and bring you some of the behind-the-scenes footage on the features that we're bringing in CRM 2011. Thank you.